might work better if you stop laughing. <laughs> I can do this. <laughs> Yay! Speed run before work! Let's do it! Today, we're going to be 3D modeling this uh, ball peen hammer. It's going to consist of two parts, the head and the handle. We're going to take a multi-solid body modeling approach. That is to say, we're going to make a 3D model that just captures all the geometry and then later split it off into parts. So let's get to it. We'll go and click File, New, and we'll create a new standard millimeter part. We'll then get started on the head. We'll create a 2D sketch on the XY plane. And we're going to make an ellipse of arbitrary size. Oop, boop. Excellent. And we'll add in some dimensions. So we'll say that, that major radius is 20 and this minor radius is 16. Lovely. Next, we'll click Finish Sketch. And we're going to extrude it both sides for a total of 24 millimeters. And what this has done is it's captured this central geometry of the head of the hammer. Next, we're going to be capturing this revolved section, the front, and this revolved section at the back, the ball. So we'll go and we'll make a 2D sketch, and it doesn't really matter which plane we do it on, we'll do it on the XY plane. Yeah, oh, XZ plane. <laughs> Lovely. And just rotate the view a little bit. And we're going to slice the graphics by hitting F7. Alternatively, you can hit this little button down here. Great. Okay, so we're going to capture the revo revolution uh, at the front. Um, and we'll give it some dimensions first. We'll use constraints to make sure that its central axis is in line with the center point there. Um, we're going to project geometry and grab that. And we're going to position the hammerhead so that it's uh, six millimeters back from the front and it's 24 millimeters long. As for the radius, uh, let's go ahead and give it a radius of eight mil. Good stuff. So that's the front of the hammer. Um, next, what we want to do is capture the ball at the back. Um, we might leave out the fillet because that's a bit of a complicated geometry for the moment, but capture that uh, semicircular ball at the end. So what we're going to do is we are going to draw, uh, well, I guess uh, we'll start off with the uh, line and this will position it, make it construction. And we're going to give it a radius of uh, seven millimeters. So we'll give it, start an arc. And we'll start an arc at the end of that construction line and put in a ball of radius seven millimeters. Now, if we're going to revolve this around a central axis, this is going to have to come out perpendicular to the construction line. So to do that, we'll come with a perpendicular constraint, click our arc, click that construction line, and there we go. Um, now we want to be able to control the angle at which this ball goes back. So we might go ahead and put in, uh, say, 125 degrees. Looks good, looks good. And as for the remainder, let's go ahead and we will put in an arbitrary arc uh, going from here to here. And we'll use a vertical constraint to make sure that the end of that arc is in line with the end of the ball peen hammer. Um, in fact, it's probably wiser to go beyond just in case it clips. All right. Uh, next, we'll draw a vertical line and we'll finish it off by closing the geometry there. We might make this uh, angled line construction because it won't really matter for the geometry. Okay, um, there's going to be a discontinuity here, but that is perfectly okay. In fact, I might want more of a discontinuity there. So let's go ahead, we'll give it a, um, let's go ahead and give it a diameter. Well, it would be harder. Eight mil? No, no. Larger the better. 32. Okay, good stuff. So let's go ahead and click finish. And now we're going to revolve these two sections, the front and the back there. And we'll revolve them around the central axis. Looks good, looks good. So our hammerhead is starting to take shape. Lovely. So next, what we want to do is we want to uh, trim off the sides here, give it more of an aesthetic look. So what we're going to do is we are going to make a sketch on one of the vertical planes, this one here, the YZ plane, and it's going to be another ellipse, lots of ellipses today. 
So we'll draw the first ellipse and then just an arbitrarily larger second ellipse because we're going to be using it to cut the geometry. So for the major diameter, we'll give it a radius, uh, major radius, we'll give it uh, 20 mil. And for the minor, what I wanted to do is run perpendicular to this part here. Now I, I could use constraints or I could just put in the, no, 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 let's use constraints. Let's do the right thing. We'll go ahead and click underneath project geometry and click project cut lines. This will take a cross section of uh, the geometry on which we've done our um, sketch. Uh, make them construction while we're in town. And we'll go ahead and use a, a, a tangential constraint between the ellipse and that geometry there. Lovely. As for this major radius, it, uh, the major um, oval doesn't really matter. In fact, if you wanted to, you could use an offset and just make it arbitrarily larger. We'll say 30 mils larger. Um, when we're going to use these two ellipses to cut out the geometry. So let's go ahead. Uh, we'll go and click extrude. Click uh, between those ellipses and we'll say cut all the way in both directions as a cut command. And do you see how it removes that geometry there? Ooh, very nice. Okay, we'll click OK. And next, what we're going to do is we're going to add in a fillet at the front here. So we'll say four mil fillet, looking very good. Okay, um, and we'll also need a fillet here at the back. So let's go ahead and we'll put a three mil fillet at the back for the ball peen portion of it. All right, so we've made the hammerhead. Um, we need to put in our cool little plink thing. That's imagine the sound that a ball peen hammer would make. Um, so what we're going to do is we are going to create a offset plane from uh, the XY plane here. And honestly, it doesn't really matter where we put it. Uh, in fact, we don't even need to make it, but we will make it anyway. Uh, make that plane. And we'll start by making a 2D sketch on the plane. So we want to position this text in the middle of that circle, oval. So what we'll do is click project geometry, pick that face, fail, and then go to <laughs> make out text anyway. So we'll make our text up here and we'll put in plink. And uh, uh, I always create the text and then realize it's too large or too small. So we'll go ahead, um, put it down. If we want to resize the text, all you need to do is double click it. Select all the geometry and we'll type in maybe six mil. That looks better. And notice that it's not in the middle of its handle. So we'll go back into the text editor and make sure that it's center justification and uh, middle justification. Great. Okay, next, um, there's a, a neat little trick that you can do. You can draw a construction line that connects the corners of your text. And then use a uh, coincident constraint to connect the middle of that construction line with the center point there. Looking good. Okay, now if I recall correctly, this kind of geometry, you can't use the emboss feature for, um, because it's not like a, a circular surface, but I have been surprised before, but I'm not surprised this time, haha. <laughs> okay, so we'll go ahead and we're going to use an extrude and use uh, a cut to go into the surface. Uh, a cut, come on, one mil. And we'll say start, and we'll change the start plane from this straight plane here to this ovular surface. There we go. And now we're cutting one millimeter into the ovular surface. Oh, maybe that's a bit too harsh. Let's make it half a millimeter into the ovular surface. Great. Cool. All right. So let's go ahead and we'll hide that work plane. Now we want to put the plink on the other side. But uh, we'd run into a problem. If we tried to mirror it, the text is also going to be mirrored and that's going to be unreadable. So I'll show you a useful trick. We want to put the plink on the other side, but we also want to be as lazy as possible. So how do we do it? Um, the trick is to actually use uh, here a circular pattern. Um, so go ahead and click circular. Uh, choose the feature that we want to revolt, not put on the other side. Uh, choose the plink text. For the rotational axis, we'll put the central axis of our model, so the Y axis. And here we can say, okay, just put two and uh, it's uh, revolved 360 degrees with two instances and we click okay. And ta-da, maximum efficiency. Very good, I like. Okay, okay, so the hammerhead ooh, uh, looks about complete. We'll go ahead and add in a small fillet on the front. Good stuff, good stuff. 
Okay, so that's the hammerhead done. Next, what we're going to do is uh, do the handle. Now, in order to have a handle, we need to have a hole through the hammerhead. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll go and um, ordinarily, I'd probably make the handle first and then make the hole from the handle, but we're going to do it in reverse this time. Um, so we'll go ahead, we'll make a work plane. We'll say offset from, uh, say, this mid plane here and put it up to the top. In fact, let's be tricky and make uh, that work plane visible by right clicking and clicking V. And then we'll say plane, uh, tangential to plane parallel. There we go. So we've got a plane. Uh, tangential to the top there. So um, let's go ahead, we'll make a sketch on that plane, and it's going to be yet another ellipse. Meh. And um, we'll go ahead and make an ellipse. Uh, I honestly don't remember the size of the handle, so let's go ahead into our model and see if we can uh, find it. Um, I'm just going to use my absolutely lame approach of doing a sketch <laughs> on the origin and seeing if I can just reverse engineer it this way. There are way better ways to follow my terrible example. It was uh, 11 and 7. Strange, don't remember those, but okay. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll make it uh, 11. Ooh, we'll make it 12 millimeters here and 8 millimeters there. Great. Oh, well, perhaps you can be even neater. Was that it? 7 mil? That'll do. 7 by 12. Great. We'll click finish sketch and what we're going to do is we're going to extrude this all the way down to the bottom so if we remember right the uh, diameter of this uh, uh, the uh, the minor radius of this uh, oval was 16 so that would make it 32 mils tall so we'll cut and we're going to add in another feature we're going to put in a taper if you grab this ball you can add in a taper angle um, so we'll type in a taper of negative two degrees so it becomes smaller at the bottom that way the hammer gets locked in there when you put in the handle. Probably not how they do it in real life, but uh, we'll go with it for this one. All right. So next, what we're going to do is we are going to make a, a second solid body, and it's going to represent the handle. So let's go. We'll make that sketch visible again. And we are going to start off by making an extrusion, and it's going to be 32 degrees with a negative 2 taper again. Um, but this time, we're going to click New Solid. And this is going to be the start of our handle. We'll click OK. And having extruded that uh, little part into there, now what we've got are two solid bodies. So it's always good practice to name your solid bodies so that you don't get lost. So this solid one we will call uh, hammer head. And solid two will give the name handle. Great. So next, what we're going to do is we are going to um, continue the handle. So let's go ahead and we'll create a sketch. On the bottom of the handle there. Use project geometry, finish sketch, and we're going to extrude it down 60 millimeters. Good stuff. And just make sure that it's all part of the same solid body there. Good. All right. So next, what we're going to do is create the ergonomic handle there. And we're going to use the magic of loss to achieve it. So we're going to make a bunch of sketches that capture the cross-sectional area, pretty much. So let's go ahead. We'll create a start a 2D sketch on there. Click project geometry and just capture that cross section there. Next, we'll make a few offset planes. So we'll make uh, one 45 down, and then another one 45 down from that, and then a final one 45 down from, oops, damn it, 45 down from that one. Um, now, it flares out a little bit here. So we're going to create a projected geometry of that oval, um, make it a construction line, and then offset it by two millimeters and click finish sketch. Next, we'll create another sketch on the third plane there and project the original oval. And then lastly, a sketch on the bottom with the flare. There we go. And now we're going to use the magic of lofts. So we'll come along here and say loft and we'll hover over the end here until we get the curve rather than the loop. Choose that one, that one, that one, and that one. Ooh, very nice, very nice, I like it. Um, sometimes, yeah, you can get the directional condition and make it a little bit smoother. Looks good. And we'll click, okay, just make sure that it's joining the material rather than creating a new solid body. Cool. Lovely, handle's looking good. We'll go ahead and we'll hide the work planes um, while we're in town. Always good practice to 
hide the work planes after you've used them. And the last thing that we need to do is clean up the end of the handle there. So we'll create a sketch on the a vertical XY plane there. And we'll create a project, uh, we'll uh, click um, project cut edges, which will grab the cross section. Actually, no, that's a bit messy. Let's go ahead and click project geometry. Choose the oval there and offset it. We'll say offset it 20 mil. Good stuff. And we'll close the loop using lines. Excellent. And now all we need to do is extrude all the way in both directions as a cut and make sure that it's only affecting one of the solids not both like it is now so we'll change oh, we'll ch uh, choose the solids from the list here and choose the handle and that way it's only cutting the handle excellent looking good okay so there we finished our multi-solid body um so now we have to save it let's go ahead we'll click file save and we'll call it ball peen hammer dot uh, ball peen hammer multi solid body. You don't need to call it this, but I find it's very useful to do so. Excellent. Okay, so the last step is to make this multi solid body into components. So these components will look like this. So that's what the hammer head will look like. Ooh, we are missing chamfers. How uncouth. Let's go ahead and add in chamfers on the top and the bottom. Ooh, looking very nice. Excellent. Who doesn't love a good chamfer? Okay, um, let's go ahead and we'll make, oh, actually, I noticed that the chamfer is cutting into the lip there. We can neaten that up a little bit. Because we did everything parametrically, it's not a problem. All we need to do is come here and change this width to six. And the handle will change along with it. Eh, yeah, pretty cool, huh? Okay, so let's go ahead, we'll make it into an assembly. We'll come to manage, click make components. Click our solid bodies, choose a template for our assembly. So this time we'll choose metric, standard millimeter. Choose a location. So we'll come along and we'll plonk it into this folder. We'll call it ballpeenhammer.iam. Click next. And for each of the part, um, multi, uh, each of the solids creates a part. So we'll choose a template for those. Standard millimeter. Click OK. And there we have it. We've got an assembly with two separate parts. So um, if we save it, what we'll find is that we will create uh, two new parts, or three new uh, files and two new parts. So there's an assembly, there's the head, and there's the handle. So we can do two things while we're in town. Let's go ahead, we'll uh, assign a material to the head and the handle. So um, for sake of speed, we'll go ahead and we'll call this uh, stainless steel 440C. And for the handle, I don't know the first thing about woods. Let's give it a nice wood. Uh, let's go and say an oak handle. That sounds fair. That sounds rich. Let's go ahead. It's got an oak handle in there. And there we go. We've got our assembly. All right. Unfortunately, I'm going to shoot to work. Thank you very much for watching this episode. I hope you uh, learned. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you next time. Cheers. Bye.